I bought Baker's. You know, I love to think outside the box when it comes to my breakfast recipes. And these chocolate crepes are definitely going to satisfy your sweet tooth in the morning. And if that wasn't enough, today is bonus video day thanks to my partnership with Good Cook. So after this video, head over to the Good Cook page and watch how you can make waffles without a waffle iron. Yes, it is possible and they're absolutely amazing. As always, the recipe can be found on biggerbolderbaking.com along with all of the information about the good cook tools that I use. Okay, let's make our batter in a nice large bowl. Add in your flour, sifted cocoa powder, sugar, and salt. And then just give these a little mix together. Okay, so into this, we're going to add in our wet ingredients. Eggs, some milk, melted butter, and a little dash of vanilla extract. And then with your whisk, mix it until you have a smooth batter. So if you don't eat eggs, don't worry about it. You can actually replace them with flax eggs and those will work really well. And I'll put that information on my website. Okay, lovely. I love how you can just mix this recipe all up by hand in a few minutes. Now we're gonna pop this into the fridge and let it chill for around 30 minutes because crepe batter is so much better once it has time to chill. And then we're gonna fry them off. So now if you're more of a savory person than you are a sweet in the morning, I've got the perfect recipe for you. Recently, I made a breakfast tart with eggs, bacon, cheese. It was absolutely delicious. And that can be found on my website. I strongly recommend you go check that out. So it's been 30 minutes. Our batter is nice and chilled. And now it's time to cook them off. So for crepes, it's really important that you have the perfect pan. And I have one right here. So this is a good cook 11 inch crepery or also known as a griddle. It is non-stick, which makes it perfect for making crepes. Also, it's a nice big size. And just so you know, I make pancakes on this, toasted sandwiches. I absolutely love it. It's a really inexpensive piece of kitchen equipment. And you can actually buy this right now, the link on my website. And you can be making this recipe before you know it. So now what you want to do is let this get nice and warm over a medium heat. So here I have a third cup of my crepe batter. Now for this pan, I use a third of a cup, but if you're using a smaller pan, you can always use just a quarter cup and that will give you a nice thin crepe. Now what you want to do is just pour it onto your pan and then very swiftly pick it up, swirl it all the way around until it covers the entire surface of your pan. So we're just gonna let this sit here for around two to three minutes on this side. If you need to turn down the heat a little bit, that's totally grand. You just don't want it to get too hot. So also when you're making crepes and pancakes, you need a really good turner and I'll tell you why. You need to have a really thin edge so you can slide right underneath it and flip them over without damaging it. So this is a large Good Cook Nylon Flex Turner. It works really well for this. Also, it's really great in non-stick pans as well as it won't damage it. You can see the telltale signs of when you need to flip it over because it starts to change color around the edges and little bubbles start to form on top. Go in there with your spatula and then turn it over. And now we're gonna cook it on this side for another two to three minutes or so. So this crepe batter is a little bit more delicate than regular crepes, so just be careful when you're turning it over. So in Ireland, we have this day called Pancake Tuesday and it's the Tuesday before Lent. And when I was young, my mom used to make crepes and she would line us all up in the kitchen and we would just stand there waiting for a crepe, go off and eat ours. And by the time you were finished, you would line up again and she would just continue making crepes until all the batter was gone. It's something that I think about often and it was just such a sweet time. So it's been roughly two to three minutes on this side. Our crepe is done. So I'm just gonna carefully move it off and then we're gonna continue cooking off the rest of our batter. Now, one of the really great things about this pan, it's non-stick, and that's what you need to make the perfect crepe. So you don't need to add butter or anything, and it will just slide right off. So you know when you go to Paris and on the streets are making these huge big crepes and they put like Nutella in the middle? This is kind of what these remind me of, like a really sweet, decadent treat. Okay, then carefully just give it a flip over. Perfect. And just flatten it out a little bit if you need to. I love these kinds of recipes because they're really fast. You can do them in one bowl with a handful of ingredients that I guarantee you already have in your cupboard. Okay, lovely, this crepe is done. Now this is my favorite part, getting ready to serve them. So these are so beautiful. You don't need a whole lot to serve them. So all we're going to do is just fold it in half, fold the crepe in quarter again, then maybe do like two per serving to be nice and generous. Then I'm going to drizzle over some chocolate sauce. You can always use maple syrup, that's totally fine and then garnish it with some freshly sliced strawberries because strawberries and chocolate work so well together. Beautiful. So while they're still fresh and warm, I'm gonna give them a taste. Oh my God. 
You know, these are a great breakfast recipe. To put these on a brunch table or even have them as a sneaky dessert, they are absolutely incredible. They're delicate, they're nice and thin, they're a little bit crispy. Without a doubt, this is a show-stopping recipe. For the longest time, you've been asking me how to make waffles without a waffle iron. Well, the video is finally here. Head over to Good Cook's page right now and check out that video. And I'll see you back here really soon for more bigger, bolder baking.